Welcome back, baseball fans. Summer 69-72 Carryover League. Tonight, we are back in the postseason tournament, advancing into round three. Round three of the postseason tournament. It's uh, three types of matchups. Um, going back to the uh, original structure here. Uh, you play up to seven games to distinguish first from second, eliminate fourth place teams. Second round, you play up to five games. The ones meet each other to determine seeding. And then the second and thirds meet to get rid of four more teams. And now we're into phase three, third round of the tournament, where the 16 teams are gone, 16 remain. Divisions are mostly decided. There's still a chance a wild card gets slotted into a division lead. But the 8th best team visits the 5th, and the 7th visits the 6th. So what does that mean? When we look at the uh, schedule for the postseason, here we are. Over here, the last three game eliminations. Uh, starting in the American League, the 5, the 6, the 7, and the 8. In the National League, the 5, the 6, the 7, and the 8. We begin in the American League with part two of a series between the White Sox and Orioles. To recap, they played in the second round and the Orioles got through the White Sox by winning two of five games. The White Sox needed to win uh, four out of five, but the Orioles, just like a weed, you don't pull it out by the root, it just grows back. And the White Sox were not eliminated because their record was a game better than Seattle's record, so they advanced into that eight spot. So the Orioles are like, not these guys again. These guys are a pain in the neck. So the math suggests that the White Sox can win this game, win the series two out of three, force a tiebreaker, and win that one, and win three out of four. They couldn't win four out of five. They're being asked to win three out of four. So, we have a game one in the book. So what do you think happened, folks? Game one will just be called the heartbreak game. Uh, through seven innings, one of the greatest pitched games by starters, Pat Dobson, two hits shot out through seven, and Tom Bradley of the Chicago White Sox has a no-hitter through seven innings. Flash to the top of the eighth. Russ Snyder gets the third Chai Sox hit, followed by number nine hitter Don Young, a farmhand in the Cub system who only played in two years, 1965 and 1969, then his career is over, hits a two-run homer to give Tom Bradley a 2 nothing lead. Then, in the bottom of the eighth, Elrod Hendricks leads off the eighth inning with a bloop single, and there goes your no-hitter. And as what happens when guys lose no-hitters, they tend to lose their concentration a little bit. After getting a couple guys out, he's left in, he walks Don Buford, he walks Bobby Gritch, and then with the bases loaded, he walks Frank Robinson to force in a run. The Orioles still just have one run to this point. That's when I hook him with three consecutive walks and he's, he was already broken after the second walk. I bring in a lefty, Terry Forster, to face the lefty Boog Pal. Boog Pal lines a single in the center field. And just like that, it's 3-2 Orioles. Dick Hall comes in to close it out in the ninth inning. The Orioles, three runs, two hits. The White Sox, two runs on five hits, a heartbreaking lo loss for the Chai Sox. What a real shame. Now they have to win three in a row against the Orioles. That's what they did in their last series. They lost game one, then I broadcast them winning game two, and then they won game three and four. They have to do the exact same thing for the second series in a row. And the series will shift to Chicago for this game. Game three and game four, if necessary, would be in Baltimore. So this is the only time the White Sox will play at home in the series, making it even more difficult. Your starting pitchers will be, for the Orioles, 
Dave McNally, and who else in a potential elimination game for the White Sox but Wilbur Wood, the heart and soul of the Chai Sox. A couple of lefties. Last time uh, these two pitchers met each other, Wood bested McNally. Needs to do it again to force the series back to Baltimore. So let's get it going. Don Buford leads it off. 1-9, bounces a short. Bobby Gritch, 6-10, bounced a short X. This is Aparicio, and Aparicio makes the play. Frank Robinson, 1-5. Let's take a look at Frank Robinson's card. It's been a quiet year for Frank, who's been an all-star the last couple years. 32 home runs in 1969 with a 308 average with this card. That's a solo shot. Hey, your boob pal, 69, skies left. All right, Louis Aparicio, former Oriole, leads off for the Chai Sox. 55 off McNally. Homer, 1-7, to seven, double, and that's a double. Walt Williams, 37, short. Dwayne Josephson, 1-8, single in a right field. Frank Robinson is a plus one arm. Does Aparicio try it? 1-16, to 16, he's going to run. And he scores. we got a tie game. Carlos May, 34, right. And Orlando Cepeda, 38, third. Tied at one, into the second. Paul Blair, 2-5, pops the second. Brooks Robinson, 1-7, base hit. Andy Echebaron, 1-9. One 1-9 nine. One nine for Echebaron. Double one to 18 is a double. Second and third for Danny Walton. 36 is a K. And with two outs, it's Davey Johnson. 33 grounds the third. They strand two runners. Bill Melton. 3-6. Let's take a look at Bill Melton's card. 33 bombs and 70 with a 263 average and not very good defensively for whatever reason. Anyway, 3-6. That is gone. And the Chai Sox take a lead. Jim Paglioroni, 47. Bouncer to second. Davy Johnson is a 2-8. Makes the play. Jim LaFay, 2-9. Pops the first. Don Young, 46. Single 1 to 10. Single. And Aparicio, 46. Single 1 to 10. Same thing. Rolls the single. Two on two outs for Walt Williams. 47 is second X. Again, Davy Johns is a 2-8 and he makes the play. 2-1. Chai Sox in the third. Don Buford, 32. Rolls the third. Bobby Gritch, 1-6. Let's take a look at Bobby Gritch. 1972 card. Uh, he would go, he'd be the lone Oriole rep in this year's All-Star game as the rest of the Oriole hitters were kind of in a slump this year. But 1-6 is triple 1-4 double. He rolls the 1. He's at third base. He's the tie run. They're going to bring the infield up for Frank Robinson. 56? Doesn't matter. It's a sack fly to left and we're tied again. Boo pal. 46. Single 1 to 14 off of the wood card. He misses it on a 16. And the game is tied again. We've had a lead change and two ties already. Dwayne Josephson, 612, flies the right. Carlos May, 34, flies the right. And Cepeda, 1 2. Ooh, this is big. A foul and an injury. Orlando Cepeda gets knocked out of the game with an injury. That's a shame. He has a, had a wonderful year for this team. 34 home runs and 305 at-bats for the Braves in 1970, but he was traded to the White Sox, and the White Sox sent Tommy John to the Dodgers, and the Dodgers sent Dusty Baker back to the Braves. They need a new first baseman. Let me see here. Pagliaroni could play first, so that just means they need a new DH. All right, inning is over. Pagliaroni will play first base. And we go to the fourth inning. Two to two. Paul Blair. Two nine. Center. Brooks Robinson. 49. Short X. This is Aparicio. Echebaron. One six for Echebaron. He strikes out. Bottom of the fourth. Bill Melton. One two. Third. Jim Pagliaroni. 67 is a line runner short. Jim LaFay. 49 is a K. 2-2 two, two in the fifth. Danny Walnuts for the Orioles. Free agent edition. 54. Sky's the center. 
Chai Sox outfield defense is not the greatest. Don Young is a 3E10 in center field. And that, and, uh, you know, he makes the catch. Third time's a charm. Davey Johnson, 35, double one single. Buford, 37 is a walk. Two on for Bobby Gritch, who tripled earlier. 37's a walk. The bases are loaded for Frank Robinson. Wilbur Wood has to buckle down. Pitching on two days rest for the second time because of the uh, rule I'm using that he was used in 1972 where he can pitch on two days rest because it's these uh, uh, postseason series are going long. Wood is being the White Sox have not had a day off. So Wood is coming back on short rest and it shows. Base is loaded one out. Frank Robinson. 56. Another sack fly. Just like last inning. 3-2 Orioles. First and second, two outs for your Boog pal. And Boog skies to right. Orioles take a 3-2 lead into the bottom of the fifth. But first, let's pause a moment for station identification. This is the Shrimp Trawler video channel. Este es el canal de videos de camaroneros. Oh, yeah. A licorice tea with honey and mint. Boy, this... That'll get you going. 3-2, th th bottom of the fifth. Don Young, 63. Bouncer to first. This is Boog Pal. 2-E-12 at first base. Makes the play. Louis Aparicio, 47. Bouncer to second. Davey Johnson, a 2-E-8. Makes the play. Walt Williams, 1-8 is a single. C Steeler, but Echeverry has a minus two army. It's not going anywhere. Dwayne Josephson. Skies a left. McNally has pitched better. He got rocked in the last meeting. It was shaky early, but has settled down and has got nine out of the last ten batters out. We go to the six. The Orioles have scored runs very efficiently with just five hits, three runs. Paul Blair leads off. 47, single one of six. He rolls a seven. Brooks Robinson, 38, bounced to short. And Andy Etcheberry in 210, bounced to short. 3 2 O's, bottom of the sixth. Carlos May, 3 6. Let's take a look at Carlos May card. That is gone. One of his 18 homers in 1969 for the Chai Sox. The fireworks thingamajig in center field uh, goes shooting off. The game is tied at three. It's been a crazy fun season for the White Sox. Not expected to even have a winning record and they're trying to knock the defending world champions out of the playoffs and get to the playoffs themselves so with Cepeda out of the game oh boy I have my choice of hitters here don't I I guess okay we'll go with Al Weiss and he will be the third baseman and Melton will be the new DH Al Weiss comes in to bat 2-4 flies left Melton, looking for another homer, 69, sky is the center. And with two outs, it's Jim Paglieroni, 512, bounce it a short. Gritch is a 3E26, and he makes the play. Another classic in the making, folks, 3-3, three, three, the White Sox. Man, they, they're, they have no fear of the defending world champion Orioles. They played them tight now. This is the seventh straight game. And the teams have split the first six. Sadly, it's not enough for the White Sox because of the, the disparity in their records. If this was playoffs, it'd be a different story. You throw the regular season records in. But the tournament is not set up that way. So, top of the seventh inning, 3-3. Three, three, Wilbur Wood, oh boy, he'll pitch a long time. Starter nine. Maybe he won't because he's been pitching on two days rest. So we'll see how I go with this. Danny Walton leads it off. 38's a K. Dave Johnson, 311, grounds are short. And Buford, 2-6. Don Buford with a single. A B-stealer with two outs against a plus one or two arm. We're going to try a stolen base here. The Orioles, and oh, it's going to be close. 13, 14, 15, I want to say. 12, 12. Just in there. So, a rare stolen base for the Orioles. Bobby Gritch, runner at second and two outs. The pitch, 1-9, Bobby Gritch. 
Shows why he was the all-star, the spark plug of the new look Orioles. 1-9. It's a single to center field. Buford trying to score from second. He's a 16-17-18 against the zero young, zero arm of young. Makes it an 18. We'll look right here. And he rolls a 16 and scores. So the stolen base worked. And it's 4-3 Orioles. Does Gritch try and do the same thing with Frank Robinson up? Let me double check something here. No. He's going to hold it first base with a lead. Because he wants Frank Robinson to bat. Frank Robinson. 4-4 four, four off of Wilbur Wood. That's the mistake. Homer. 1-9. to nine, Double. And it is gone. Frank Robinson. The second homer of the day. And wow, Oriole fans. If Frank Robinson turns it on, it could be like last year again. Finally, the Orioles with a 6-3 lead here in the seventh inning. I'm not taking Wilberwood out. Boog Pal, 5'11", bounces the second. LaFay's a three at second base, and he makes the play. 6-3 Orioles. All their defense is in. Dave McNally's a starter seven. Steve Barber, Dick Hall, Ron Taylor, all available. It'll be Jim LaFay leading off. 37, this guy's the center. Don Young, 46, single one of 10 is a single. Aparicio, 411, first C, runner second with two outs for Walt Williams. And 38's a ground ball to short. 6 3 after 7. We forgot to do the seventh inning stretch time music. We are listening to Baby Huey Story, the living legend. Uh, had Curtis Mayfield's band playing for him, or some of the players. He was on Curtin Label. Tragic story of Baby Huey. What a voice. Listen to me. Running. Hard times. Mighty, mighty. Great LP. Came out in 71. All right. So. We'll go to the eighth inning. Wilbur Wood will continue to pitch. Paul Blair. 33, flies left. Brooks Robinson, 35 is a walk. Etchebaron, 2-8 is a K. With two outs, it's Danny Walton. 35 is a walk, and the number nine hitter, Davey Johnson. 2-7 is a bouncer to third, and the inning's over. Dave McNally, not in danger of breaking here. In the eighth, with a 6-3 lead, but the meat of the lineup, 4 the White Sox, including May and Melton with home runs. So here is Dwayne Josephson. 38. Grounds are short. Carlos May. 2-5. You saw the card earlier. There's a homer chance there. Homer won a two dub uh, double. He'll take the double. Al Weiss. Again, the injury to Cepeda is huge in this game. Losing that middle of the lineup force in a very winnable ball game really hurts. Al Weiss. 310. Let's take a look at the Al Weiss card. A New York Met in 69. The Orioles certainly don't want to hear about that. And Al Weiss delivers here with a single to right field. And suddenly the Chai Sox will send the tie run to the plate. And it's Melton who homered earlier with 33 bombs and Pagliaroni behind him. Do you go? I think you got to take McNally out. That's I'm of the opinion. And bring in Dick Hall as a relief three to get the final five outs. Yeah, that was the formula for the Orioles last year in the World Series. They went with a starting rotation, Dick Hall, and three other relievers who hardly pitched. So they're going to try the same formula. McNally leaves in a potential elimination game with a tie running at the plate. And Dick Hall comes in to face Bill Melton and Jim Pagliaroni. So, we saw Melton's card earlier, the 3-5 card. The pitch to Bill Melton with runners on the corners. 1-12 is a walk. The bases are loaded for Jim Pagliaroni. On the bench, they have Bobby Knoop and Russ Snyder, neither with power. Pagliaroni's got power. He's gonna bat. The bases are loaded. 
with two outs. Let's take a look at the Pagliaroni card. You might remember him from last year. Uh, he was on the Dodger team last year, and he had a bunch of big home runs for them. But they uh, decided to let him go in the offseason, figuring that uh, the luck would run out. It hasn't. He's been playing well for this team as well. But he's much better against lefties than righties. So here we go. Bases loaded, one out, playing back with a 6-3 lead. Jim Pagliaroni, the pitch. 56 off of Hall. It's a sack fly to left field. It's a two-run game. Runners at first and second with two outs, and it's Jim LaFay. Let's take a look at Jim. Doesn't have power either. Needs to roll a 4-4 or 4-5 to score a runner from first off the Dick Hall card. The pitch to Jim LaFay. 59 off of Hall is a ground ball to second C. It's 6-4 in the ninth, and you're probably wondering, do you let Wood finish this thing? I think you have to. Wilbur Wood, he comes back out in the ninth inning, giving up six runs, but he's Wilbur freaking Wood, folks. Probably only will lead the league in innings pitch this year through 360 million innings in 1971 and two. We'll face the top of the Oriole lineup. No danger breaking is a starter nine. So Buford will lead it off. 2-8 is a single. And it'll be Bobby Grish. Big day for Bobby. He's been on three times. Had a big hit in the seventh. Bobby Gritch, 46 off of Wood. It's a single to right field. Buford, 16 runner. Williams plus one arm, a 17 to go to third. He's going to run, and he makes it. Runners are on the corners with nobody out, and he'll pitch to Frank if he breaks, we'll hook him. Frank Robinson, 48, second X with the infield up. This is LaFay, a 3 E11, and he makes an error. Let me just double check the D running there. Ouch. That hurts. Yep, 3-11, LaFay just made an error. With runners with the corners, nobody out in the ninth inning. Not looking good. Not a good look for the end of the White Sox season here. A little sloppy. 7-4 in the ninth, first and second. Nobody out. I haven't broken wood yet. I'll only take him out if he breaks. First and second, nobody out. The pitch to Boog Pal. 1-9 is a K. Paul Blair. 43, right X, but Walt Williams is a 42. Finally, you're starting to see the weaknesses of this White Sox team. They have really bad defense. 42 in right field. And he makes the he makes the catch. And there's nobody on third base. So it's no tagging up there. Nice grab by Walt Williams as a four. Still a winnable game, it's just three runs. Brooks Robinson, first and second, two outs in the ninth inning. The pitch to Brooks. 49 off of Wood is short X. This is the reliable Aparicio. And he makes the play. So the silly error in the ninth inning. And it's a three-run game. Wilbur Wood tips his cap as he goes into the dugout. The White Sox fans love him. And we go to the ninth inning. And it'll be Don Young at the top of the order for Dick Hall. The three-run lead in the ninth. The Orioles have a chance to actually, as crazy as it sounds, to actually beat the White Sox four out of seven times, which is what you're supposed to do to a team like this. But they do it over two separate series combined. Here it is, Don Young leading off in the ninth. 47 off of Hall, is single, one of 14, and he gets a base hit for Don Young. Three for four, batting ninth. And what would probably be the last out bet of his career, we, we think. You're not going to break Hall. He's a relief three. And the bullpen is quiet. And the orders are saying, if you get three or four runs off of Dick Hall, congratulations. Louis Aparicio, 67. It's a K. Walt Williams. 1-7. Walt Williams, let's take a look at Walt's card. Nice card. Finally got into the league with a 71 card. It's This will hit you 294. 1-7 is double 1-4. It's a base hit. And you got runners on the corners. They're still going to play back. The tie run is Josephin, and he has power. So, Dwayne Josephson, a chance to tie this game. In the ninth with one out. The pitch to Dwayne Josephson. 67 off the hall card is a strikeout. So it comes down to this. Carlos May, 
the cleanup hitter for the White Sox. Second best hitter for their team in 1969. He's two for four today with a homer and a double. He's got runners on the corners with two outs in the ninth inning against Dick Hall. With a home run to tie this thing. The pitch to Carlos May. Two, five, Carlos May. Homer, one to nine, double. It's going to hit the top of the wall for a double. No sense running the guy from first. Almost tied the game, missed it by 10 feet. Carlos May, homer, one and nine, double off a of Dick Hall with two outs in the ninth inning, and we're still playing in Comiskey, and the Orioles are getting that sick feeling again. That's an RBI double, scoring Don Young in a 7-5 game. The tie run is Carlos May at second base. <laughs> and the batter is Al Weiss. Al Weiss, a member of the New York Mets, he singled in the eighth inning here. Gosh, do I pinch it? Uh, yeah, I, I got Russ Snyder on the bench. He's not that much better. And I got Bobby Knoop on the bench. I think you have to go with Karma and go with Al Weiss here. So, a New York Met member, Al Weiss, will bat here in the bottom of the ninth inning of a 7-5 game with runners at second and third and two outs off of Dick Hall. A 4-4 or 4-5 ties the game, as does a 1-12 wins the game, and a 1-4 ties the game. So there's a chance. Here we go, the pitch to Al Weiss. 37 is a strikeout, and the game is over. 37 is a strikeout for him. Was, would have been a strikeout for Orlando Cepeda, who got hurt. Would have been a strikeout for Bobby Canoop. And would have been, you guessed it, a strikeout for Russ Snyder. So, it's all over. The comeback falls short. Do not shed any tears for the Chicago White Sox. They had a remarkable season. Unfortunately, they end up finishing right at 500 with these two losses, but they made the Orioles cringe throughout this series. And actually, the White Sox won three out of the first four, if you, if you would have considered this to be one best of seven. The Orioles won the last three. So, this game is over, as is the series. Wilbur Wood, nine innings, ten hits, the seven runs, only six are earned, walked for four, struck out five, yet another complete game. I think he's got 12. 12 complete games and about 13 or 14 starts. Dick Hall gets a sloppy save, comes on in the eighth and faces Bill Melton, gives up a walk in that inning. Then in the ninth inning, uncharacteristically for Hall, three hits, a run in three Ks. And there we go. McNally does get the win. Ten hits, though. Four runs. And he walked. didn't walk anybody. He struck out one. 1019, 0109, 710-513. 4-5-1-4. That is game number two. The Orioles won them both. They would have played that well in the first matchup with the Chai Sox and knocked them out of there. They might have had a chance to catch the Red Sox for first place. But unfortunately, they're stuck as the number five seed of the American League, which confirms that they get a date with the worst team advancing in the American League playoffs, the Detroit Tigers. And we've got some fun trivia coming up. But before we do that... There it is. The White Sox season is over. They finish 22 apiece, wins and losses, which actually at 500 is the same winning percentage as the fourth place team, the Milwaukee Brewers. But the White Sox push the Orioles around, and that's alarming for Oriole fans. White Sox at 234 with a 372 ERA uh, on the year. 
And there it is, 13 complete games in 131 innings for Wilbur Wood. His ERA wasn't very good though. 131 innings in 44 games. Prorate that over 162 game season and the dude's pushing 400 innings. Well, I wouldn't have let him pitch that long, I guess if I was playing 162 game season. He finishes with a 316 ERA and a nine and five record. I guess he'll be in the Cy Young balloting, but I, there are a couple performances I am I think are going to be better in the American League. I'm looking at one right now, Burp Lye 11, for instance. Um, offensively, Carlos May had a nice game you just saw a little too late. 12 homers, 32 RBIs, but he uh, finishes the year hitting 229. So at least he showed up there. And with the two wins, the Orioles are 22 and 14 and the Red Sox are 22 and 9 because they did not have to play in the last uh, uh, round. The Orioles are hitting only 243 this year with a 336 ERA. Their best hitter, as crazy as it sounds, has been Bobby Gritch. Bobby Gritch is hitting 336 this year for him. I mentioned Frank Robinson trying to get hot. He's pushing it now. He's getting up there. He's up to 284. So he was a below 250 for a nice chunk of this year. He's up to 284. As far as the pitching goes, the Orioles might want to use Pat Dobson more. He's 5 and 1. McNally's 3 and 4. Palmer's 5 and 4. Cuellar's 7 and 3. But uh, Dobson's on the short end of the stick. They normally go with a three man rotation. And then only when they have to play five games of five days do they use Dobson. So. Let's take a look at the overall standings now in the American League. And let's start here in this division. So the Kansas City Royals, they passed the Twins. The Royals and Twins were tied after the first round of the postseason, but the Twins held all the tiebreakers. There's only a problem with that. You gotta be tied, and they weren't. The Twins lost to Boston a few times, and the Royals swept the Yankees. So at a game and a half back, the Twins are going to have to play, and they can't quite catch the Royals to reclaim first place. The Twins will be playing the A's. The winner gets the number six seed. And it's interesting because the Twins and the A's will be battling each other in the years of 69-70. The Twins would be the first team to win the American League West in 69 and 70 and then the A's take over in 71, 2, 3, 4, etc. They'll be playing for that playoff spot. Meanwhile, with the Red Sox getting a bye along with the California Angels, the Detroit Tigers will play the world champion Orioles. But let me see if I have more uh, postseason action here that I can refer to. I don't have last year's. Basically, the Orioles and the Tigers have met in the last two postseasons. Um, the uh, 2020 postseason. So, in the 2020 postseason, the uh, where do they play here? Yeah, there it is. The top seeds met, and the uh, Orioles beat the Tigers. The Orioles and Tigers have won the last two World Series. And they will play in the first part of the wild card round, the number five at number four. And the uh, other playoff team, either the A's or Twins, will meet the Royals, with the Angels uh, getting a bye and the Red Sox getting a bye. That's it tonight from the America League three-game elimination tournament. Thanks for checking it out. We'll see you next time.